Hello everybody from Plant Reviews. Today, 20, uh, today Sunday, 28th of June, and I'll talk now about uh, the Asiatic uh, lilies. Uh, these are uh, plants uh, that uh, come out from bulbs, like uh, all lilies, as far as I remember. And uh, it is uh, the uh, group of lilies uh, offering the widest array, array, array of colors to gardeners. They come really in an incredible variety of colors, as you can see. And today I will show you a few blooming in my uh, garden. These plants are called Asiatic lilies because uh, they are derived from, um, they're mostly derived from Asian species. In particular, uh, the species uh, that were hybridized to originate uh, these uh, beautiful uh, flowers are the uh, Lilium amabile, the Lilium uh, dauricum, the Lilium lancifolium, the Lilium davidi and the Lilium lechthlini. But other uh, species have also been used, including uh, Lilium bulbiferum and also Lilium pumilum, that, uh, as you know, is one of my favorite lilies and I have one, one beautiful plant here. And uh, this is a peculiarity among uh, uh, the plants that were used to produce uh, Asiatic uh, lilies because uh, Lilium pumilum is one of the few uh, Asiatic uh, lilies that is uh, uh, fragrant. Um, well, it, it still comes from Asia indeed. Uh, however, uh, the group uh, called Asiatic lilies are, uh, is composed only by hybrids. Uh, the species used for originated the hybrids are actually in a different group of the gardening classification of uh, lilies. However, this is a species that we used for producing uh, the hybrids of uh, um, the Asiatic lilies and another species used in I have one blooming at the moment is the Lilium lectolini that comes with this. Sorry, guys, but with this beautifully, beautiful yellow colored blooms uh, dotted in black, uh, like red black. Lilium lectolini is one of the most beautiful species you can uh, get for the garden. However, this one, like most of the hybrids it originated, is absolutely unscented, uh, at least to my nose. The um, Asiatic lilies are um, uh, among the lilies that bloom uh, earliest in the season, uh, usually from late June to uh, mid-July and vary uh, in uh, uh, size from uh, very small uh, lilies like uh, for example here this uh, orange joy that is about uh, there is about 40 50 centimeters tall as you can see here i have grown it uh, in my uh, in my garden well you can see really it barely arrives it it, it is knee uh, high as you can see to much taller lilies like the yellow county that is about 150 centimeters uh, tall. Uh, the flowers um, are born in uh, quite a good uh, number, uh, usually four to six per cm, and uh, their size is about between 10 and 15 centimeters in uh, uh, diameter. Uh, they unfortunately most of the times as I said are not fragrant uh, but uh, they make up for the lack of fragrance definitely with the vast uh, um, uh, array of colors you can get uh, in these uh, plants. The leaves are usually quite large in these uh, hybrids, in the Asiatic, uh, in the Asiatic hybrids. Uh, um, they are not like uh, almost needle-like, uh, like the most of the trumpet lilies, as the Lilium regale. And um, you can see that they are uh, larger. They're about between two and four centimeters wide, uh, still quite uh, long leaves uh, anyway. Uh, the color is uh, green, absolutely green, as uh, most of the plants I have in the garden. I never found a lily with a particular, uh, different, particularly different leaf color in comparison to uh, the rest of the 
uh, genus. So um, if you know it, uh, please uh, write it in the comment. I would be very curious to know if there is any other uh, lily that I can grow also for the beauty of the foliage rather than for just for the beauty of the flowers. But so far I am very happy for the beauty of just uh, to just to enjoy the flowers. And the leaves, anyway, are still uh, pretty nice. I like the uh, very bright green of uh, these uh, uh, lilies, especially because uh, the green is one of the best colors, uh, uh, contrasting the uh, yellows, oranges, and red that uh, uh, are the main colors of the lilies I cultivate in my garden. Uh, lilies are, uh, uh, among lilies, some of the easiest uh, to grow. I never had any problems with them, as long as you uh, cultivate them in uh, well-drained soil and uh, full sun. Um, my soil is mostly clay, so obviously I need to enrich it with uh, uh, organic compost and uh, uh, some uh, sand. I have to say that usually with uh, uh, multi-purpose compost I had great results in uh, for the lilies uh, however uh, when I grow some uh, delicate species I prefer to mix uh, sand in the compost just to improve even more the uh, drainage of the of the potting mix However, in the garden, I never found any problem uh, with aesthetic lilies using normal uh, multi-purpose compost. But obviously, if you want to add sand for extra, uh, as an extra measure, in case you live in uh, areas that tend to be a little bit waterlogged, then I would recommend try to cultivate them in a raised bed just to um, add an extra um, safety <laughs> measure to avoid the bulbs rotting because as uh, most bulbs uh, the worst that uh, can uh, be the bulb in is actually in a waterlogged um, in a waterlogged uh, in waterlogged ground that uh, this will lead for sure to rot. They are fully hardy in the UK and uh, I never had any problem in uh, winters even with the beast from the east uh, a couple of years ago with temperature less than uh, minus seven degrees for a few days and I found that uh, in the UK are uh, fully hardy and uh, I think Asiatic lilies are actually hardy up to zone uh, at least uh, up to zone 5 uh, most of the UK is between uh, zone 8 for the mildest parts uh, up to zone uh, 5 I think so they are perfectly they will be perfectly fine throughout the UK I'm just uh, thinking about the northern areas of Scotland like the islands but uh, obviously definitely the closer you go for, for, you go up north uh, the most difficult for the plants to grow however throughout uh, the mainland uh, Great Britain they are absolutely hardy um, the, about the blooming season uh, they, the blooming season can actually last pretty long about one month uh, obviously the more um, uh, the more flowers produced the bulbs, uh, the older the bulbs, the more flower uh, you get per stem and the more stems sometimes uh, you can get uh, in time because uh, the bulbs actually produce offsets so you will end up with a nice clump of uh, lilies in a few years. Uh, the bulbs of aesthetic lilies are uh, planted in uh, usually in spring. Uh, they are available for purchase in the spring planting bulb uh, in spring, in the, during the spring planting uh, bulb season so from I would say late January up to uh, May. Uh, in May you can find many for clearance because it's the end of the uh, bulb uh, planting season. However if you are after very peculiar varieties or um, hybrids I would recommend to buy them as early as possible uh, actually uh, is uh, already is now yeah uh, late June so usually between July and August I think you can already reserve online hybrids that uh, um, uh, would uh, can will be shipped in late winter early spring Personally, I prefer to plant uh, lilies uh, um, by February or March, so they can uh, adapt um, better 
to the ground they have more time actually to grow and they bloom earlier if you plant them later in the spring and sometimes you don't have much time to be regular in the watering i found that because i live in kent there is quite a dryish area in the uk uh, sometimes the growth rate is affected so and uh, they don't really grow well if you are not uh, able to uh, keep the water um, to keep the watering consistent during the uh, growth uh, phase and obviously during the blooming phase uh, while if you plant them early in the season the bulb is able to develop roots and uh, the roots are able to reach down deep in the ground when they find sufficient moisture obviously i'm not saying to just uh, keep watering every possible day the plants uh, when you buy them in May or June because as I said they are quite sensitive to waterlogged conditions but uh, really if you plant them in a good uh, well-drained compost uh, it's very important during the growing phase that you keep uh, them moist. I will talk now about a few beautiful varieties I have and let's start here with the Yellow County. The Yellow County is one of my favorite uh, Asiatic lilies. You can see the uh, flowers are absolutely pure yellow, very, very bright, and uh, it is a simple flower. Asiatic lilies, like all lilies, have three petals and three sepals, uh, and are basically uh, in the same shape, the petals and sepals, and most of the times also have the same color, so they are called tepals. The male part of the uh, lilies is uh, the um, uh, stamens and anthers, that are these ones, and the female part is the stigma, that in this lily, is in the lilies, is uh, central. And you can actually uh, pollinate a lily very easily, just take the enter from one lily and you can just uh, brush it on the stamen of another sorry on the stigma of another lily spreading the uh, pollen around uh, you can also do self pollinations as well but uh, um, pollination in lilies as in all plants work better if you cross different plants um, I will show you uh, probably is even easier if I repeat with um, the pollination with these other beautiful varieties. Uh, Asiatic lilies are actually divided in two uh, different, uh, sorry, in three different groups. Uh, the first group is uh, the upward facing uh, lilies, like for example this one, the um, uh, orange joy. Uh, you can see that the flowers uh, go upwards. Uh, then the second group is the outward facing uh, flowers. As you can see, the yellow county has uh, outward uh, facing um, flowers. And the third group is uh, downward facing flowers. And this is a night flyer that uh, it is indeed one of the plants that has a kind of downwards uh, uh, facing um, flowers. Uh, most of the, uh, some of the Asiatic lilies also, they uh, have a kind of bowl shaped uh, flower, while others, like the night flyer, has kind of recurved petals, as well as the yellow county, as you can see. Uh, so let's take an answer from the night flyer. You can see the bright orange pollen and I will then spread it on the stigma of the, uh, of the yellow county flower. You can see how the orange pollen is being spread on the stigma. Well, as I am here, I will put a bit of self-pollination in the, the uh, night flyer because I really love the very dark colors of this uh, Asiatic lilies. And let's do a bit also on the orange joy that I also put some pollen of the yellow county. Let's see if seed pods develop and then hopefully what kind of seeds 
we'll get. Uh, ideally, when you cross pollinate uh, lilies, you should put a, a label of uh, the uh, parents uh, you crossed. Um, I'll show you a better video about uh, lilies pollination uh, next time. But basically, this is the uh, this is the method. Uh, my next video will be just talking a little bit more about pollination however uh, this is really the technique is very simple uh, the yellowing is about 150 centimeters tall so it is a quite a big uh, uh, aesthetic lilies to keep here we have the night flyer as i said the night flyer is a beautifully uh, dark red uh, lily as you can see with uh, nodding flowers i'm just trying to focus unfortunately i have the sun behind me so I can't really see very well on the camera uh, on the screen of my camera of my of the camera on my mobile however yeah you can see how beautiful the color is and uh, the beautifully recurved petal uh, are and the gently nodding flower is an absolute standard for that garden I think um, it is about 120 centimeters it's a little bit smaller than the yellow county uh, here we have the orange joy is uh, again I love bright colors and this one in particular I found uh, the orange joy is quite variable in uh, color some of them are lighter orange some of them are deeper orange I love particularly this one because as very intense uh, orange uh, um, color in the outer part of the flower while the center is a, a lighter but still very bright orange with uh, fine uh, dots uh, around. This plant is pretty small, it's about uh, 40 to 60 centimeters tall as you can see, uh, but definitely uh, it doesn't go unnoticed uh, thanks to the beautiful colors of uh, the, uh, of the flower. Uh, we have uh, then the Guys, I have to try to be extremely careful, I'm sorry because of the wind. Ah, talking about the wind, usually Asiatic lilies uh, do not need staking. However, if you really live, live like me in an area that tends to be quite windy, please stake, uh, remember to stake them. Uh, I basically, you can see, I have, uh, this is not an Asiatic lily, this is a Lilium Regale, but it works uh, precisely. The same with Asiatic lilies, uh, I have secured this plant with uh, one um, yeah, tiding uh, on one side of the fence from one side and to another fence from to the other fence from the other side so it's actually quite stable now i will try to go through here to show one of the amazing flowers of oh, one of the most beautiful flowers i have among the uh, Asiatic lilies and these the Avalon sunset you can see this is a plant that uh, is uh, this uh, yeah this is a lily that always uh, go um, out of stock so if you like the flower just order it as soon as possible you can see how beautiful is the uh, yellow outer part of the petal and the uh, brighter red orange uh, inner part is this is one of my favorite lilies unfortunately as it is not fragrant as most of the asiatic lilies the um, uh, height is about 100 120 centimeters but the color is absolutely stunning and this, the, the bloom is just opening as you can see the anthers are not even uh, producing uh, open or they didn't, didn't uh, um, open for basically show up the pollen yet but you can already see the beauty of the colors of this uh, uh, lilium now I'm trying to go back without basically damaging my other plants not too sure if I was able to well anyway uh, then uh, I have a few I bought a few also red and uh, burgundy uh, lilies in particular uh, the black charm and the black stone are uh, plants that I found pretty similar I didn't put any um, I didn't put any um, 
uh, tag on my plants and now I'm not able really to tell which is which however one of the uh, most beautiful colors in the Shetik Lilies is uh, the dark uh, red this burgundy so the black either both the black charm and the, the black stone are uh, dark uh, burgundy and they have upward facing flowers they are absolutely beautiful and uh, as you can see the about one of the black charm and one of the black uh, of the uh, black stone and uh, this is one plant here and the other plant is here and basically to me looks precisely the same so i'm not too sure if actually the nursery sent me two bulbs of the same uh, variety of actually they are so uh, similar in color that uh, I don't really understand the difference, but anyway, the um, size is about, uh, I would say, 15 centimeters in size, in diameter, and uh, the color uh, is absolutely gorgeous. You can see the uh, this dark uh, red all over with uh, yellow uh, pollen. Uh, proceeding here, I have uh, an energetic lily called red pixel, sorry, uh, the white pixel. Uh, this is a fully white uh, lilium, it's about one meter tall with uh, purple dots inside. It's absolutely the most psychedelic and I really do love this uh, combination of colors, it's very very striking. Uh, here I have the uh, lilium called uh, Sunderland. Uh, orange, very very uh, bright color, even if at the moment is in uh, part shade, so unfortunately it's in the shade, I can't really uh, tell you, <laughs> show you in, in the sun. There is a little bit of sunshine coming through here. Uh, the sun will come around this area later in the afternoon and now it's in the morning, but you can see already here how bright is the orange color on this uh, lily. Uh, here I have a, another lily that I think I bought as if this the lily foreigner, but the, I found the foreigner is actually pretty different. Is still a wonderful uh, bright purple uh, lily with uh, black dots. Again, about uh, 15 centimeters in diameter. Uh, the, um, I have another, a few more Asiatic lilies here, and I have here the Corallo Beach, that is an orange lily, a little bit lighter uh, uh, of, in orange than uh, the, uh, uh, than the um, other, uh, the other orange lily I just showed you, and uh, the size as well is about 10, uh, no sorry, I would say yeah, 12 centimeters in uh, diameter. Uh, here I have a beautiful red lily that I unfortunately don't remember the name. Uh, there are some beautiful red lilies that you can buy. Um, I bought the, um, you find from Taylor's some beautiful red uh, lilies, uh, for example the Highland, the red Highland is one of the most beautiful I think and if I do remember correctly this is actually a red uh, Highland, they grow about uh, 1 meter, 1 meter 20 and the um, flowers are about uh, 10, 12 centimeters in diameter. Uh, then I'll show you another Beautiful lily. This is the Hotel California. This is a particular striking lily. Uh, this is uh, not difficult to find. Uh, Taylor says often for sale in uh, the. Uh, you can find it basically in every garden center. Uh, of the flowers are beautiful. Uh, a beautiful yellow flushed with uh, dark red in the center of the petal and with black uh, dots. And uh, I will then. Uh, end the video with uh, one of the most striking striking Asiatic uh, lilies that is uh, the uh, Scooby-Doo lily. Uh, this is actually a, a pollen-free lily and uh, it is I suspect a hybrid yeah, of uh, uh, Asiatic uh, lilies because uh, 
of the absence of fragrance, the shape of the flower as well as the leaves. You can see how similar are the leaves to the other ajetic uh, lilies. And basically in this uh, lilies the uh, stamens are transformed in uh, tepals. You can actually imagine that because the um, stamens are six in the lilies like the tepals and indeed uh, in the in this uh, uh, lily the scooby-doo the uh, six stamens are transformed in six uh, uh, additional tepals that give this uh, double aspect to the lily and in addition to this very exotic uh, aspect uh, it is uh, great if you don't like pollen as you can see on my hand going around everywhere uh, and you can still have these beautifully uh, colorful, beautiful, colorful uh, flowers in your garden without uh, the fuss of getting pollen, getting the risk to the pollen stain your clothes. Uh, the plant is about one meter, one meter twenty tall, I would say, and uh, it is an absolutely uh, gorgeous uh, Asiatic uh, lily. Um, fortunately, I don't remember the names of uh, my other Asiatic lilies, however, this one is possibly, possibly the uh, London Pride, I think. It is uh, red with flushed uh, red dots in the middle. And I then have this uh, other um, lily uh, that is uh, more ball-shaped and is a uh, very bright orange, as you can see. Uh, I'm not too sure about the name of uh, uh, this, however, uh, obviously, the colors, uh, I just wanted to show you the how many colors uh, are in my, in the variety of Asiatic lilies. I have, unfortunately, I don't have any uh, red twin. Ah, actually, no, I do. This is a red twin lily. Uh, unfortunately, I planted in a little bit uh, of the shade, so you can actually see that uh, the red didn't uh, turn up quite as red as it should have been. It's more like orange red, but as the Scooby Doo, this is another um, double flowered lily. Uh, you can see the uh, six petal, uh, tepal, the six additional tepals, uh, the lack of uh, stamens and the six tepals um, behind. I hope you enjoyed this uh, quite long video, but I really wanted to show you a few varieties of the Asiatic lilies. Uh, just a mention, some uh, people categorize the double flowered lilies or pollen free lilies in a separate uh, category. Uh, however, these uh, to me are so closely related to the Asiatic lilies that uh, I decided to um, group them all together in the same video. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, uh, if you liked it, give us a thumbs up, otherwise obviously thumbs down and if you uh, didn't like it, it would be great if you can let me know uh, what uh, you uh, didn't uh, like of the video so I can improve my next videos and uh, I hope to see you in uh, my next video. Thank you very much, I'll see you next time, bye.